Welcome back to PhD TV, and today I'm going to talk about my ranking of the James Bond actors. Now, of course, this is going to be my opinion, as I know that these are probably not going to be everyone's opinions. But again, it's my opinions, and I think I have some pretty good reasons of why they are this ranking. But again, my opinion is not the right opinion, it's just a opinion. And let me know down below what you think of my opinion and tell me yours. I would love to know what your ranking is. So my least favorite Bond is actually going to be George Lazenby. And it's not for really any reason. I think he was fine. He was the one who was actually not an actor. He was a male model. He was in it for one movie. One of the best movies, may I say. But he just wasn't the best Bond in terms of just technical reasons. He was one movie, not an actor's actor. It's, that's just pretty much it. He just wasn't generally the best. Not bad, just not the best. Now this one may ruffle a few feathers, really, but I'm not actually really a Roger Moore fan, personally. Now, I do like his movies, and I do like his interpretation of the character, but really, sometimes his movies just got a little bit goofy, and I know that's also a sign of the times. That's not really his fault specifically, but Bond is an assassin. Bond is someone who is able to woo the women, able to do everything possible in the Sean Connery-like way, where you're suave, you're elegant, you're also, as I said, you're a ladies' man. You can do the action. And he was fine. He was a romantic Bond. He, he could woo the ladies. He's Roger Moore. I'm not even going to go in that direction. That's a given. But it's just a little campy for me because I, I like the idea of like a badass Bond. Not really one who dresses up like a clown, whether or not the argument is that he was undercover and trying to survive in a circus. Just a little campy. But I love Live and Let Die. The Spy Who Loved Me is probably my personal favorite of his. The Man with the Golden Gun is honestly one of my personal, probably top 10 favorite Bond movies to me if I had to think about it. But in terms of what I consider a definitive Bond, it's just not my personal cup of tea. Now my fourth ranking in terms of the top James Bonds and ranking, again there's only six to choose from, but number four I'm giving it to Timothy Dalton. And this one is also a pretty more technical reason too. So I've actually read the books, most of them, and Timothy Dalton is actually one of the few actors that I actually do believe went in preparation for his role for The Living Daylights and read every single one of the original Ian Fleming novels. Now I've not read all the Ian Fleming novels, but I have read several of the continuation novels. And if I had to say one thing he does better than any of the other Bond actors is that he is the most book accurate Bond. Therefore, from someone who's read the books, it is a lot more of a complete and a lot more of an intriguing version of the character than Roger Moore or George Lazenby. And I would even say Pierce Brosnan now, that I'll get to him in a second. But the fact that Timothy Dalton did the homework and did a very book accurate James Bond gives me a lot of respect for him in that regard. Because especially for adapting a literary character, having a version of the literary character that is the definitive kind of, that is giving the definitive book version gets my respect. So number four, Timothy Dalton. Now I have mentioned Pierce Brosnan just a second ago, and now we're gonna mention him here. Number three, Pierce Brosnan. And this really is a sign of the times for me because even though I grew up with Daniel Craig's movies, in the theater. I grew up with Pierce Brosnan on VHS going all the way into DVDs between GoldenEye and Die Another Day. And not to mention that whenever I read the James Bond books, Pierce Brosnan is the one that I think about. As well as, again, I'm a 1996 kid, so I grew up playing the GoldenEye video game, The World Is Not Enough, Tomorrow Never Dies, as well as any other video game Pierce Brosnan was involved in. And two, GoldenEye is my second favorite James Bond movie, so Pierce Brosnan just really has a safe place in my heart as my third favorite James Bond. And now, I wouldn't even say he's very book accurate. He's really not book accurate. But if we want to talk about lifestyle, I would say Pierce Brosnan would be the one I'd want to mimic the most. To me, he was the elegant Bond, the one that dressed the best in terms of a suit. Every time he drank a martini, they looked the best and most refreshing. And I'm just gonna be straight with you, even over Sean Connery even, any time that he met the female character, the Bond girl of the movie, let's be real, he's the best looking Bond and he actually, in my opinion, was a lot smoother in regard to his player womanizing game than Roger Moore or Sean Connery. And now, I don't think he was the best in anything. He didn't have the best action, didn't have the best movies, except for Goldeneye. But something that is pretty much really agreed upon in regards to the Bond community is that he is the jack of all trades, but the master of none, in comparison to bringing all of what Bonds do 
did before and even after and being the best parts of each while not being the best of any of it. He did have great action, great bomb girls, great movies, great songs, best outfits. Get the idea. And again, mostly it is just the fact that I grew up with him before any other Bond. He was my first Bond I saw on a VHS. Mine's more of a nostalgic pick. And I know that, you know, from what I gather now that Daniel Craig's done, everyone's kind of returning to Brosnan and I think it's referred to as the Brosnan sons. But number three, Pierce Brosnan. Now this is where I'm gonna get people to unsubscribe, perhaps. But I do ask you to bear with me because I want you to understand where I'm coming from. My personal number two pick is Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Now, I think, in my opinion, Sean Connery is amazing and on a lot of technical reasons, uh, for a lot of technical reasons, he is the best James Bond. For one, he was the first. When he says Bond James Bond for the first time, that is probably the best version of Bond James Bond. He's the first. He dressed great, has Goldfinger, just for the simple fact of the movie Goldfinger, he's top tier. And he's one of the few actors that actually got to live the years of Bond while Ian Fleming was still alive and having books released. But I'm gonna be honest, here's where I start having that bear with me moment. Dr. No, very book accurate. From Russia With Love, again, a very book accurate Bond. And then Goldfinger became the blueprint for the rest of the series. And You Only Live Twice is one of the good ones. And Diamonds Are Forever and is actually considered to be one of the lower tier movies. And Thunderball, which I almost forgot, to be honest with you, was a great one and honestly probably his most fun performance as a performance solely. But he is what I would refer to is as a blend of going book accurate, but then as a performer, though he is the best and he is to many the face of James Bond, his performances got a little lazy. Towards the end, it looked like he was sleepwalking through a lot of them after Thunderball. And again, I, I, I'm just gonna say it, even again, Sean Connery is the man, he is Bond, he is James Bond, all of the above. But I do think he gets a pass a lot of times for being the first. But he does end up sleepwalking through the last half of his tenure, and his movies are actually really good. But here's my argument into my number one. And number one's gonna go back and forth with Sean Connery because again, it might be more of a tie. But my number one is Daniel Craig for the reason that he is the best in terms of a handful of things. I believe he has the best action. He's the badass Bond from the books as well. Best casual style. And as well, let's consider this, that if you've read the books of Bond, Bond wants to protect women. He doesn't womanize for the sake of womanizing, but he wants to protect women. He is a protecting, he is a protector by nature. And with that being said, the movies of the past, especially the Roger Moore era, Bond was a little less protective in the instance of, you know, having a damsel in distress as much rather than wanting to actually protect the women because he is a protective nature. And now if we're going hardcore book accurate, that still goes to Timothy Dalton, but Daniel Craig hits the sweet spot in regards to blending the book nature of Bond as well as the nature of Bond from the previous movie. And a more seamless and more consistent in terms of performance than any of the others. And again, Sean Connery, he got he starts sleepwalking after Thunderball, in my opinion. And though you can make the same argument with Spectre, Daniel Craig's performances were very consistent. Now, in some movies, he was more talkative. In some movies, he tried to be more whimsical. In some movies, he was just stoic and quiet. But in terms of bringing his A game and bringing the effort to the big screen, Daniel Craig came every single time and made effort. He never cashed it in, it felt. And now you can say that Daniel Craig had too much creative control, and to a degree, I would honestly agree to it. Point. And a lot of people said, spoiler alert, that he had too much creative influence on James Bond dying because he wanted to be the first to die. But once again, if you've read the novels, spoiler alert here, once again, even this book alludes to the fact that James Bond is killable. Now it doesn't straight kill him, it's left up for interpretation. But if it was left up to interpretation, there is a possibility that he could die. So it's not really even, not even canon, or not canon, or, or is canon. It's not out of the realm of possibilities that Bond could die. So even then, when he dies in No Time to Die, it doesn't bother me. And two, his Bond is separate from the rest, which even that, I will agree that that might be just one thing I wish they just kept up with was the individual missions. His Bond was an experiment all to itself. So it is what it is. But I don't feel Daniel Craig cashed in any performances 
His action is incredible. And yeah, he's not the most handsome Bond. He's just not the most handsome Bond. But something that occurs to me, and I forgot who said it. I don't think it was my wife. It might have been a comment I read from somewhere else, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. But the thing is, is that he is a vibe. That when he acts as James Bond, again, he's not the most handsome, and he's really not the most suave. But the fact of the matter is, he's just not the most handsome James Bond, and he's not the most suave. Both of those will still go to Pierce Brosnan. But it's the attitude, the charm, and the confidence, the aura of what makes Bond, he does the best at. And though he doesn't go full book Bond, he doesn't go full movie Bond, and he's a good mix of all of them, while also having better attributes to bring to the table than Pierce Brosnan, who also was the best of all of them, in regards of certain elements, but not the best Bond as a whole. And also, I want to make it very clear, even though I said Daniel Craig is above Sean Connery in terms of my preference, it's like right here. It's not like one's here and one's here and there's, it's not even in the frame. But it is just cusping each other right there to who really is the best one. With that being said, again, let me know down below who you believe is your favorite James Bond. What is your ranking? I want to have a healthy conversation down below. Subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or if you want me to review anything or rank anything in the future, let me know. Put it in the comments down below. I would love to look into it. And until next time, this has been PHD TV. I'll see you next time.